Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick and this is MSFS Flight Plans, a place where we take aerial exploration to a whole nother level as we search for the coolest, best looking, most interesting spots on the planet. And then I tell you everything I can learn about them in the 24 hours before each trip as we're flying along. Today we are on the south coast of England, departing from the Isle of Wight, heading north to Portsmouth, and then cruising west to Southampton in what might be the best collection of forts and ports we've seen so far on this channel. And I'm not talking about the English channel, although that may probably hold true in either case. The plane I picked out today is the Bucher 131 Youngman, because I feel like we need to give the biplane some love, and this one is awesome. Look how beautiful this thing is. And yes, it is German, but this livery is called British Green, so I think we'll be okay. And you might think there'd be a lot of obstructions in a plane like this, but not when you're sitting in the back. The view is actually pretty impressive because you're back there behind those wings, and as long as you're not trying to spot something right in front of you, which we will not do, it's going to be pretty good. The only major detractor, as you could probably imagine, is that these things are allowed, especially when you have an open cockpit. So we're going to do something a little bit different for this trip. I'm going to strap on my headset mic, or at least a simulated one, so you guys will be able to hear me over all the wind noise because there is a lot of it. Look how beautiful this is. Look at that wood paneling and everything. I think they call this the Stradivarius of biplanes. Just incredible. All right, I have everything set up, and if you have this plane or you're thinking about getting it and you hop in and you're seeing that everything is not written in English, you just click that little screw there. I had to find that out by reading the little messages that pop up while you're waiting for it to load, but you click that and it switches over to English. But you can see that everything is in kilometers. This is our altimeter, kilometers. So we're going to be flying around 1,500 feet probably for most of it, and that's about at half a kilometer. So we're going to shoot for around here for our altitude. And then thankfully, we've got these little gauges here that'll tell us when we are at cruise speed, when we're about to overspeed. So that's going to be good. And here's our vertical speed indicator. And then this thing, I think, is... I don't even know what that is. We'll check that out as we're getting going. I wonder what that is. Maybe RPMs? I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go along. But everything else is pretty much set up. So let's go ahead and just push the starter, and we'll get it going. And yep, that's loud. And we're not even flying yet. So let me go ahead and strap on my headset mic. All right, that should be a lot better. And let's just get this baby up in the air and see what we got to look at here. Before we get going, let me look at the Google Maps real quick. I almost forgot to do that just to show you where we're going. Let me go ahead and cut that throttle down a little bit. Okay, so here is the English Channel. Obviously, the UK is up here, and here is the Isle of Wight. And our airport, and we got lots of that onto this too. One of them is this airport. I'll tell you about some more of them once we get up in the air. The airport is somewhere around this vicinity. We're going to come down here this way, around the south end of Newport, come up here, come over Cowles, and then circle around this way, cruise by Ride Beach and a pier. That's another add-on that we have up there. Come over and check out some incredible forts, and man, this thing is just a porcupine of forts. Portsmouth has got an unbelievable amount of forts. So we'll check out some up here. Come on up here, check out the huge naval base they have. Come all the way around the inside of this, look at some castles they have up here, some more, more forts, more ports, a submarine museum. Come up along the coast over here, and then we'll head into Southampton up here, circle around this way. They have so many ports up here, it's unbelievable. And then come across this way, and then our destination, which is Southampton International, is going to be right around here. So that's it. All right, I'm ready. You guys are ready. Let's go ahead and do this. Parking brake off. And do you think we should turn our landing lights on? Let's just do it. We don't really have much else to play with. We don't have flaps or anything on this. All right, here we go. And this thing is not real difficult to control on the ground. Getting up in the air it doesn't flag back and forth while you're trying to get rudder authority, so it's pretty good. So look at this little airport. You got these cones on the side, you got some tractors, and then here at the very end you'll take a quick glimpse at a little fence that they have out here. See that little open fence down there? How cool is that? And of course we don't have autopilot, so I will be hand flying this. I will be glancing at little nav map. This would probably be pretty tough to VFR fly while you're on the Isle of Wight. Once you get out over the water, it's pretty easy. Just follow the coastline around. A little bit of history about the Isle of Wight while we're out here. It is the largest and second most populated island in England, not the UK, of course. And it has been a pretty happening place for quite a while. It's been a favorite of royals, poets, and technological innovation with a deep history of boat building, sail making, hovercraft manufacturing. We'll see a few hovercrafts on this trip even rocket building, though I'm not quite sure exactly where they were doing that. Look at this view. Again, if, as long as you're not looking right in front of you, great. And we don't have a co-pilot seat, so you can look over either side of this thing and get a great view. But if all that stuff's not cool enough, this place is also covered with dinosaur fossils and is home to the annual Isle of Wight Festival, which I've seen not in person, but a lot of recorded shows there. And in 1970, 
That music show took the title of the largest music event in history. I didn't get to see the numbers of how many people showed up, but I'm guessing it was pretty big. But despite all that, as you can see, it's still a rather chill and bucolic place. Without any real dense population centers, we're going to fly over the really the only two major population centers. One of them's Newport, which is over there to the right. And the well-to-do Romans of the first five centuries A.D. were apparently quite fond of this place as well, with several big villas being excavated over the years. And this is all default scenery out here. Of course, the fields look great because they always do all over the U.K. But once we get up over the cities, on the other side of the little channel here, all that's going to be photogrammetry and is going to look amazing. But the habitation history of this island goes back way further than the Romans, way further. They found stone tools that go back not thousands, but hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of years, which means whoever made them was a precursor to Homo sapiens. And over that span, this landscape has changed a lot, experiencing many periods of times when the island was connected to the coast over there, and the English Channel was likely a little more than a shallow river if it was not completely dry. If you saw that tour of the Channel Islands we did a long, long time ago, they think there used to be a big blockage of some kind up on the northern, northeastern side of the channel. It was like several hundred feet high, which probably had some waterfalls coming over and stuff. But that broke through at some point. And of course, once all the ice melted from the last ice age, it filled up with water. All right, we're approaching over speeding, so let's just go ahead and pull the throttle back a little bit. The kind of humans we'd recognize started moving in around 45,000 years ago. But this was mostly wandering tribes of hunter-gatherers until agriculture took hold about 6,000 years ago out here. And the Romans took the island in 85 BC and enjoyed it as a retreat more than a stronghold with no evidence of any town discovered so far, just a handful of rather posh villas, which I mentioned earlier. Our first landmark is going to be Carisbrook Castle, which was originally built after the Norman Conquest in 1066. And there is some speculation it might have been a Roman site before that. And the original structure was the traditional Mont Bailey style, which we'll still be able to see a portion of that. But there's also a big curtain wall up here that was built much later, which is what's really going to jump out at us in the sim. All right, so we're going to circle around it over here, and it's going to be... Where are you? Right here. Okay, so here is where the Mont and Bailey was, and it's kind of treated now, but here's the big curtain wall that they built way, way after they built the main castle, which is in this central area right here. But you can still see the pointy palisades on there. And I don't think that got touched up by any of the add-ons, which I'll tell you about all of those here in just a second, but that's pretty cool looking, I think. And you can see them from the other side, too, very pointy. And all the earthworks were added in around 1600, they think. So there's where the Mont Bailey was. There's what's left of the castle. Some notable residents to live and die down there are Charles I, who was imprisoned in the castle for 14 months before his execution in 1649. He wasn't executed there, though. And his daughter, Elizabeth Stewart, died of pneumonia down there at the age of 14, just one year after her father's death. And on a less somber note, Princess Beatrice, daughter of Queen Victoria, who also loved this island, as I'll tell you about in just a minute, lived back at that place from 1896 to 1944. So that town over there to our right is Newport, incorporated as a borough in 1608 at the head of the River Medina, which runs up ahead of us out towards the coast. Jumping out of the town of Cowes. And on the right side of that thing is East Cows. I don't know if the left of it is called Left Cows or not, or just Cows. So real quick before we circle around up here, I have got tons of add-ons, which of course, as always, will be linked in the video description, along with its exact flight plan if you want to take it just as we are, at least a close approximation of it. Since I don't have autopilot, I can't fly it precisely. But if you do and you load it up, it should get you to the best viewing positions for everything. Which brings me to our add-ons. So I have got the Orbix Southern UK pack installed, which added a lot of landmarks out here. The problem with that is, is that it is duplicating some of the in-sim POIs now, particularly in Portsmouth. So we'll still be able to see what they are, but some of the colors don't look quite right. And Freaky D also did Portsmouth, and he did a really good job with some of the ships and stuff down there, of course, the ports, and the sub at the submarine museum, some other stuff down there. 
and his is playing nice with, I sent him a message to ask him if it, it had any conflicts with Orbix. He said he didn't think it did, and I don't think it does either. The problem is the Orbix pack has a conflict with the NSIM POIs. So if you don't have the Orbix pack, some of the stuff I'll point out to you, you probably won't be able to see in the detail that we're going to see, but I think we definitely want to have it because there's a lot of cool stuff that it adds. Unfortunately, it's just, I mean, you probably wouldn't notice if I didn't point it out, but I will anyway. It's just overriding some of the other stuff that's down here from the sim, not Freaky D. So if you don't have that, throw in Freaky D's add-on. There's also an add-on for the sandbars in Portsmouth Harbor, which in real life does have a lot of sandbars in it. There aren't any before you put that in. And that makes that look really good. The airport that we left from, there's an add-on for that. And a couple other spots that I'll show you as we go along here. But I didn't want to leave out that Orbix pack because it just adds so much extra stuff. And unfortunately, that's the thing that's conflicting a little bit with the sim, which is too bad. But Freaky D has always did an outstanding job. The sandbars look fantastic. And the guy that did the sandbar said it was about 95% complete. Didn't get it all the way done because there was some kind of conflict with that, but I didn't notice anything that really looked out of place with that either. All right, we're going to see two sites up along this northern coast up here. The first is Norris Castle, which was built in 1795. And it's not this one here, it's going to be right down here somewhere. I think that might be it right there. And he built it more to look like a castle than to function as one. The guy who designed and put that up there was a politician named Lord Henry Seymour, who probably correctly assumed it would be very fashionable to share a property line with a queen. And unfortunately, this place is currently closed to the public. And apparently in pretty rough shape. This is it right here. And you can see with all the default stuff, this one is modeled, and that is the Orbix pack that did that one up. But it sounds like they're trying to cobble together funds to restore it. But it's just abandoned now. How cool do you think it'd be to explore that, that place? Well, you won't have to think too hard because I'm going to link a video of somebody doing it, which is really cool. So that'll be in the video description too. Oh, the only little spot where they didn't get the terrain right down here, they forgot to put some trees down there. Or they, yeah, I didn't add them. All right, I don't know how this next spot got overlooked, but it's called Osborne House, and it was designed and built by and for Queen Victoria and Albert in 1851. This is it right out here. And they've got some big gardens out there, but that's nothing like what it really looks like. Nobody touched it up for some reason. And both of those guys absolutely love their little retreat out here with Victoria dying in the home in January of 1901. And right underneath us, which you can't see, is something called Queen Victoria's Bathing Machine, which you can see if you go down there in real life, which was a little cart they would haul out there in the water so that she could get naked, I guess, in the ocean and have like a little curtain they would pull over it so she could do all that in total privacy. I saw that on a documentary of somebody touring the area. But apparently Victoria's son, Bertie, a.k.a. Edward VII, didn't share his mother's fondness for the property, and he handed it over to the state the day he was coronated. All right, this next little inlet is Wooten Creek, and the town at the mouth of it is called Fishburn. Looks like Fishbourne, but I'm guessing in Brit language they call it Fishburn. And it's it right down here. And you can see they got a little ferry down there. I bet they get a lot of ferry service around through here. And look at all these ships out here. Awesome. And just to the east of this town, there's some big ruins of an old monastery called Quar Abbey that was established in 1132. But we really can't see much of that from the air. This is a newer abbey, also called Quar Abbey here. And I forgot to see if that got touched up in the, by uh, the Orbix pack. So let's take a look at that. Look at that ferry down there. Doesn't look like it did. The ruins, all you'll be able to see is the outline of it, which is what it looks like in real life, and it's going to be right down over here. Well, that kind of looks like maybe a non-autogen building, doesn't it? Because that's where the Abbey is. That's definitely autogen. And in these little walls right here, that's all that's left of the, the ruins of the old one. All right, this thing sticking out up ahead is another add-on called Ride Pier. And that was built in 1814 and is the world's oldest surviving pleasure pier. And the reason they originally built the thing was because the tidal range is so huge out here that folks would have to trudge through half a mile of soggy beach to get ashore once the ferry dumped them off if the tide was out. And that just wouldn't do, of course, for an area as foppish as this was becoming. And just so they wouldn't have to go through the arduous task of walking all the way down the pier, they even installed a horse-drawn tram line real early on, which is what the left side of this pier is, or I guess the eastern side of it. And this side here is for cars. You can see they got a big parking lot out here. And pedestrians can go this way, and here's where the tracks are. And they still have trains that run down there. The trains that, this is actually a train station that runs all throughout the island here. 
And when we look at the satellite map at the end, you'll see it comes down here and goes into a little tunnel and then pops up again over here and then just cuts all the way down through the island. But if you don't put that add-on in, which is also freeware, there will be nothing there at all. All right, so this area that we're over right now is called the Solent, this water body. And we're about to see why Portsmouth is or was the most heavily fortified port in all of England. Never mind all the stuff we'll see along the coast. They build a bunch of little defenses out here in the water, too. And here's one of them out here. We're not going to fly way out there, but there's one there. And then there's another one up here. And without the Orbix pack, those will also both be completely flat. This first one here is called No Man's Land Fort, but on the Google map it just says No Man's Fort. One of the other maps said No Man's Land Fort, so I don't know what it's actually called, but they built this one and all the others in the 1800s and have since turned this one into a luxury hotel. They've got 23 rooms in this place and five bars, along with all kinds of cool stuff to do up on the top. And once we fly over, you'll even see they've got some helipads up there too. And there's another add-on, which probably wouldn't play nice with the Orbix pack, that does give an in-sim heliport that you can select if you had it, but you can land on these heliports because originally I was taking the H-125 out here and you can put it down on there. But it's probably not as high detailed as it would be if you got that other add-on pack. And you gotta check that place out online. Really cool, really cool. I didn't see how much it cost to stay there for the night. All right, we can pick up the throttle just a little bit. Looks like it's gonna sink into the water a little bit there, doesn't it? Give you a better idea of what these look like before getting converted to hotels, this next one is called Horse Sand Fort. And that's horse like the kind you'd ride around on or would pull your tram with that big pier back there. And we'll barely be able to make out the cannon ports all around the sides of this thing as we come by. And these babies were armed to the teeth. They were designed to hold 45 10-inch cannons and 44 12.5-inch guns with 10 more 12 inches on the roof. And the walls on these things are almost 60 feet thick. And apparently life was a little rough for crews on these. I read they intentionally manned it with folks who couldn't swim so nobody would try to escape. And if you'd like to own one for yourself, well, you just missed out on a real steal because that last one just sold for 700,000 pounds in 2021 to a private buyer. So I don't know what they're going to do with it. Maybe turn it into another hotel. All right, so there's Portsmouth over to our left, and there's a gigantic fort out here that we're gonna go check out first and then loop around and follow the coast up here that way as we come into the harbor. So this fort right up on the tip over here, again, will not be in there if you don't have the Orbix pack. It'll just be completely flat. You'll be able to tell there's something down there, but it looks really good now. And it's called Fort Cumberland, and it is massive. It was completed in 1812 on the site where an older fort had stood since 1747. And I couldn't tell who they were trying to keep out, but I'm guessing because of why they built all the others, it was probably the French. But the reason why they put this one out here is apparently because they didn't want anyone sneaking into this area back here to attack Portsmouth from this direction. They wanted to make sure no one was gonna creep in there. And I think they added some of these sandbars too with that add-on pack because I, I don't think those were there before I put that on either. And this is the uh, only the second time I've taken this trip with the sandbars included. All right, so look at this thing. We're going to come right around the top of it so you get a real nice look at it. And we're going to see a whole string of additional forts as we come along the coastline here up until we get to the mouth of Portsmouth Harbor. That is a big fort. Really big. The biggest one we're going to see anywhere on this trip. There will be a little bit of tiling out here in some spots. Other than that, not too bad. And I've got the graphics cranked way up. This plane is very, very easy on performance. The only time we might get a little bit of stuttering is right when we get over the tops of the cities because of all the photogrammetry. Look at this place. There was no release to anything. I mean, you can see all the palisade walls here, all the ditches and moats. Obviously, this thing's got some nice relief. And even up on the top of it, you can see little holes where the cans would have been. Incredible. So we're still not over the photogrammetry yet. You can tell this is default where it changes color up there. That's where the photogrammetry is going to start. Look at that place. Awesome.
All right, so let me just get ourselves pointed this direction, then we'll look out the right side of the plane. All right, so we got some more batteries down here. I think this one's just called East Battery, and there was another one right over here, but because it's just the default stuff, you really can't see it. And I cannot figure out, there wasn't a marker on this thing right here, but it looks like it's kind of the shape of an old ship, so I'm wondering if at some point they had a ship down there. But here's the other battery over here, and in this place up here is called Lumps Fort. And on this little side of it up here, which is kind of covered by trees, they have a big model village built in there. And I don't know if it's a model of Portsmouth or what, but I saw some pictures of that on the ground. And they said for some reason it's funny. So if you're into a good rib tickling, maybe go down there and check that out. This thing right here is called the South Parade Pier. And it has been all about having a good time since they built that back in 1879, the first version of it anyway. But it's since been destroyed by a couple of fires, and then they even intentionally tore it down during World War II. So the Germans couldn't have any fun if they came out here. And these days it appears to be mostly restaurants, with one at the very end called the Best of British Food. Which may be significantly better than anything Ethiopian guests are accustomed to. Sorry guys, I couldn't help myself. And that one right down there, just above our wing, is called South Sea Castle. And that was one of... Henry VIII's constructions, who was very paranoid about the French also, and the Catholic Church, probably for good reason. And this thing here is their aquarium, which we'll see on the other side of our wing once they come by, doesn't look like too much. But there is a skate park up here, which is modeled very well. Actually, that might have been back there. Yeah, there's a the skate park. Here's their aquarium. And they got a big Navy memorial right down here, which is that thing that was originally built after World War I to commemorate all the guys that died in that battle. And then they started Adding the guys from World War II as well. Alright, so we got a lot to see over This thing is called the Spinnaker, and that's just an observation tower with three different decks up at the top of it here. And now it's all white. They repainted it all white since this was made. And that thing's about 500 feet tall, I think. Okay, so we got a lot to look at in here. This is the HMS. There's lots of museums. This is the old naval yards, which is still a functioning naval yards. This is the HMS Warrior, the first full iron hulled warship. And then this down here is the, I'm sorry, I may have said USS, HMS Warrior. And this is the HMS Victory, which is the oldest naval vessel still commissioned. And in here, which is supposed to be white on top, and this is one of the ones that kind of got overwritten, that's where the Mary Rose is, which was the flagship of King Henry VIII, which sank just outside the harbor after being in service for about 30 years, and then they raised it in the 1980s and put what's left of it inside of that place. And if you want to check that out, I'll link a video to that too. It looks really cool. Very climate controlled and very dark, but it is neat looking. Okay, so we got all kinds of ships down here, all kinds of aircraft carriers. We got some submarines somewhere down here. I spotted them before. I'm having trouble spotting it. There's one of them, and there's two more of them over there. I love submarines, so I always look for those. Got a couple cruise ships over here, and Charles Dickens' birthplace is somewhere over here. And the world's oldest Functioning dry dock is out here somewhere too. I think it's called dry dock number five, maybe. And I didn't remember to see where exactly that was, so I don't know if we can see it in the sim or not. Okay, let's come around this way over here. And I should mention, if you fly all around the city, you see that it's actually an island. There's a little channel that comes around over this way. It's called Broom Channel. And up along the north side of the island, we're not going to fly over there to look at them, but you can see the remains of an old moat they dug out just south of that little natural channel. See, all of these sandbars weren't here before, so those have all been added by the add-on. Okay, up here on this little port, we're going to get a double helping of history at the site of an old Roman fort upon which was built Port Chester Castle, which we'll probably be able to spot up in the corner. This is it right here. And the castle was probably built in the 11th century and was used by royals for hundreds of years, notably King John, who used it as one of his favorite hunting lodges. And you can still see the outer curtain wall here, and I don't know where exactly the Roman fort was or how big it was. And I don't know if maybe this is part of the Roman fort or if that's part of the relatively younger castle that they built down there. But that looks cool. And all the way, if you remember that Antwerp flight, all the way around the perimeter of this, they've got additional forts that look just like those out in Antwerp. We'll see if we can see any of them. Some of them have been repurposed for different things, but some of them are still fort museums. 
We're not at a great angle to see them, but I'll show you where they're on the satellite map. And I flew out there before. You can see most of them, and they do look good. All right, while we're circling around to our next spot, a few famous people from Portsmouth. Christopher Hitchens, one of my favorite debaters of all time, despite being a man of faith. He was a renowned atheist, but I think he's one of the most well-spoken and well-thought-out, as far as what he's speaking, guys, I've ever heard. He passed away a few years ago. And Roland Orzabal, one half of the Tears for Fears duo is from here. Richard Kipling and Mike Rutherford, if that doesn't ring a bell, he was the guitarist for Genesis and Mike and the Mechanics, and you would definitely recognize him if you saw him, if you're a Genesis fan. And Wanda Sykes, but she was actually born in Portsmouth, Virginia. So she just gets an honorable mention. Quite a few places named Portsmouth in the world. Okay, we're going to come up here and check out a place called Fleetlands. And that opened in 1940 as a Royal Navy Air Yard that serviced naval fighters, eventually shifting over to just helicopters. And it's not a real big place, so I'm guessing it was once much larger. I'm going to also assume there's probably a runway down here at some point, because it'd be really hard to drag the plane through the water to get them over here. Maybe that was a runway, I don't know. But in 2008, it was handed over to a company called Vector Aerospace, which, according to their website, services different types of aviation engines. And this is an add-on, too, so we'll see a couple of helicopters parked down there. And I think this also added an instant heliport, if you want to take off from down there. All right, can we see into these forts over here? Let's dip our wing real quick. Mm, back there, maybe? Not really. We'll see a really nice-looking one here in a second. Once we come around here, there's a little bit of that tiling. All right, our altitude's a little high. Again, I want to be at about the 0.5 kilometer height, so we'll come down a little bit, try not to overspeed as we do that. And even if you don't throw that add-on in there, you'll see all the hell pads, you just won't see the helicopter sitting on them. Look at all these ships out here. Wait till we get up to uh, Southampton. Unbelievable. All right, if you look real close around all of these little buildings out in this area here, you may notice that most of them have dirt piled up around the sides of them. And you know what that usually means. This is called the Gosport Defense Munitions Facility, and it's where they store all the ordnance for the naval base. And they get it on the ships by loading it up onto tugboats and barges, and then they haul it out to this thing right here, which is where big cranes lift it off the barges and put it in the ships. And you can even see a little ship that's parked out there right now. I'm guessing they do that so that if there's some kind of a problem, it doesn't blow up the whole Navy base over there. All right, so let's get a good look at this fort. This one's called Fort Brockhurst, and here it is right here. Along with all the others surrounding the harbor, this one was built in the 1860s, also out of fear of a French attack. And unfortunately for this place, and there's two or three more that string right along this way, by the time these down here were complete, artillery had sufficiently advanced to the point where all of them were too close to the harbor. French guns, if anyone had decided to use them, could still share the, shell the area from far enough away that these forts were irrelevant. Forts couldn't touch them. The ones up on the northern side were far enough away, but not these out here. All right, we got to come back over this way because the submarine museum is right down here, and they do have a submarine that I think was added by Freaky D because before I put his in there, I couldn't see it at all. It was just trees. So thank you again, Freaky D, for all your wonderful work. All right, can we see those little berms piled up around this stuff? You can see some of them down there, and all this stuff up here is also part of it. Look at that thing. Oh, that's part of the fort still. Look at that. You can even see all the little entrances to all the casemates and stuff down there. How cool is that? And this is what all of them look like. They kind of have a moat going around them. Some of them have been almost completely overgrown. All you can see is a big patch of trees where the water would have been. We'll check all that out on the satellite map at the end. All right, I'm going to pull the throttle back a little bit because I'm going to come down some here. So there's the HMS Warrior again. There's where the Mary Rose is over there. So this place where the submarine museum is now was where they serviced all the submarines out here from the very early 1900s all the way up until 1999. And I think they opened the museum in the 1960s, so it must have been dual purpose museum and still active location for servicing the subs for a while. And the sub that they have out here is called the Alliance, and it is right down here. 
We'll see it's much better in just a second. And they've raised it up out of the water now, but it used to be a training sub before they donated it to the museum. We'll come around the side here so we can see it a little bit better. That's it right there, sitting up out of the water. You know, most of the boats are up out of the water too. That's fantastic. I don't know if Freaky D fixed that up or not, but I seem to remember my first pass about the add-ons. They were sunk down pretty well in the water, or at least just flat. Right up next, we've got two really nice looking forts. The first is Mockton, which unlike all the others, and this is it right up here. Unlike all the others that we've seen so far, this one was built in 1779 for fear of an American attack during the Revolutionary War. And then Fort Gill Kicker is next, which is this one right out here, and it looks really old and abandoned because it is. That one went up in 1853 and then got some additional reinforcement during World War I. But they disarmed it, and look how good that looks. In 1956, and started using it for storage. I don't know what they were storing in there. And then they just completely abandoned it in 1999, but it looks good here in the sim. And they sold it at auction in 2022, and now they're planning on building a bunch of houses up around it and restoring the fort, which will be neat. And this one is also detailed enough to see down inside of it where all the little portals and stuff are. Look at that. Very cool. And there's that other one. And that kind of has that revolutionary, you know, late 1700s look with all the palisades going around it. Look at that place. Awesome. So you may be wondering, like I was, how much action all these dozens of fort around the harbor may have seen. And from what I could gather, I don't think any of the defenses which are still standing ever saw any other than German bombs during World War II, and they saw a lot of those. But they did have quite a few assaults in the earlier history of the region, including Danish Vikings and pirates in the 800s and 900s AD. And then the French came and hit it in 1326, and again in 1377. And then it attacked itself during the English Civil War in the 1600s. They actually shelled the town from the forts. And that was about it, as far as I could tell, other than getting flattened by German bombs during World War II. All right, this one here is called Brownden Battery. And you can see they got a couple little places where some naval cannons probably were at some point. And this whole area here is called Brownden, and I don't know why it's called that, other than maybe the fact that it's brown. All right, let's get out here just a little bit. Oh, look at that, they got an aircraft carrier floating right out there. Incredible. All right, so right over here is the Solent Airport. They built that in 1917 as a military flight training facility, and then they used it for that purpose all the way up until 96. And to date, it's used mostly for general aviation. But one interesting story about that place is that they discovered a 60-foot-long unexploded mine under one of the runways while they were doing some repair work in 2006. And then they found 19 more just like it. Apparently, there was a plan to destroy the place if Germany invaded it so that they couldn't use it to land reinforcements. But they dug all that stuff up and detonated it somewhere. I bet that was a big explosion. What's even cooler than that is that there's a big hovercraft museum right along the coast on this side of runway 5, which is the one running down this way. And we'll be able to see a couple of the uh, hovercrafts parked outside. They've got several of them on display, which can be seen better on the satellite map, but there's at least one huge one we'll be able to spot from the air. And they opened this place in 1988, by the way. All right, so it looks like that's probably hovercraft, so maybe there's two of them. On the satellite map, this is all containers out here. But then here's the other one over here. Oh, you can see a few more. That's a little one there. Look how big those things are. And they got another little one there, and maybe another one right there, too. But that would be awesome. And it's not a national museum, either. It's operated by a big nonprofit. Okay, so we're going to track along this estuary, which is simply called Southampton Water, as we head up to the city and ports of Southampton. Prehistoric activity aside, which is about the same as the rest of the area, Southampton has served as a major transit point between England and France, both during war and peacetime. After the Norman Conquest in 1066, this was the shipping hub from Winchester, about 10 miles to the north, which used to be the capital of England. So they'd go from here over to Normandy, and it was also one of the staging areas for D-Day, along with Portsmouth, of course. And they have got some serious ports and piers up here. 
which saw most of their expansion during the Victorian era, which is when they started laying the foundations for what would become this massive complex that we're about to see. You know, I don't remember sandbars coming out this far either, so maybe even some of these were part of the add-on. Oh boy, looks like we got a container ship traffic jam up here. All right, let's come up a little bit now. We sank down too much. And give it a little bit of throttle again. In 1912, a brand new luxury liner called the Titanic set sail from Southampton on both its maiden and final voyage across the Atlantic, sinking just four days later. And the North Atlantic, oh man, looks like those things might have hit each other. Look at that. All right, we're gonna cruise over here real quick because right over here, there's the remains of a circular fort called Calshot Castle, another of Henry VIII's projects, born of his paranoia about a French invasion, which never came. And I read that that place had a garrison of 16 men, but had 36 cannons. And in Lubbock, Texas, they would call a move like that, big hat, no cattle. That would make more sense if you check out our recent flight out there. So here it is right here, right on the tip. Now this is interesting. This one's not moving, so it was actually modeled with a wake in there like that. That is a big tanker. Really big. There's a little castle out there. So everything on this side is not photogrammetry. Everything up on this side will be, and we'll have a couple of POIs that were also added by the Orbix pack here. We'll see in just a second. Let me see how we're tracking on our little nav map there. Okay, we're, we're following along, all right? It's not hard. Just stay in the middle of Southampton water. Okay, so up here in just a little bit, we're going to see a big building in the middle of a big field on the right. It's called Netley Hospital. It's a museum now. And that was built after some very strong encouragement by Queen Victoria in 1856. And when it was done, it was the longest building in the world. Seeing a tremendous amount of service during both world wars. Being known as the 28th U.S. General Hospital during the Second World War. And unfortunately, they destroyed almost the entire thing in 1966, leaving only the central chapel, which is what we can still see today up here. All right, so it's going to be, that's it right there. So we'll come up here past this little very nice looking oil terminal. And check that out. And just north of the hospital is going to be the town of Netley. And just north of that, right along the water, is Netley Castle. And that place, which is also modeled in here, was another one of Hank VIII's artillery forts, which stayed in use through the English Civil Wars and was converted to a private residence in the 1800s. And then a nursing home from 1939 to 1998. And now it's an apartment complex. And I bet it's a very cool one. So there's what's left of the hospital. And if you look at old pictures of it, it went all the way down this way and all the way down this way. It was gigantic. But they said that's just the chapel, and I guess a YMCA was in there as well. All right, so we'll come by Netley up here. And then down here, we'll see Netley Castle. And right behind the castle, we'll barely be able to see the ruins of Netley Abbey. It was built in 1239 and lasted up until the Henry we all love to hate decided to tear all of them down, starting in 1536 with the dissolution of the monasteries. All right, so there's where the ruins are. And then here's the castle right here. I mean, gosh, I can't think of a cooler place to have an apartment. And an old castle right along the water. And if you look close, you can see the ruins really look like ruins up here. There's Natalie over there. And there's the castle. All right, let's swing out here so we can get a nice look at all these ports and piers. And I don't know what these things are. Maybe also residential complexes. They kind of look like them. And they got a big university out here, too. This bridge is also an add-on. It looked terrible before that. So that'll also be in the video description. You know, it's all filled in under here, underneath there, which really stuck out at you because it's the only big bridge in the area. How sweet is this plane? So awesome. Yeah, we're sitting in the front, and they don't even have any gauges or anything in the front, so I think it's meant to be flown from the back, as I think a lot of these things were. But this view's not too bad at all, as long as you're not looking at anything right in front of you. And look at all these cruise ships there. So these things are probably ferries right here. They look a lot like ferries. And then right up here, we're going to sail the cruise ships. And this is one of England's biggest cruise ship terminals. They move a lot of people through here. I think they said they have 450 cruise ships docking here each year. And that is a big one right there, isn't it? This is St. Mary's Stadium, which was built in 2001. That's probably the best look we'll get at that because we have to come around here to land at this airport out here. That's a big soccer stadium or football if you're in England. 
And this city was originally, there was a wall going all the way around it. And they said you can still see the remains of the wall, but I couldn't really spot them in the sim. I think it probably comes around this way. And you couldn't even really see them from the satellite map, other than a bookmark saying where they should be. And these ports up here also look pretty good. And I don't know who touched those up, because I seem to remember the cranes not looking great, but I don't think Freaky D did anything up here. Maybe he did. Look at that, some more cruise ships. And some more transports, and a tanker. But these cranes look really good. Unfortunately, the last cruise ship got double modeled, so I'm guessing it may have been the Orbix pack that did that. And that's another one that's static, but has a wake, which is interesting. And if you look for Isle of Wight in FlightSim.to, there's another add-on pack, which I did not include because there's already so many ships that adds a bunch more ships around that area. Look at these cranes, and look at all those containers. That is a great looking port, really nice looking. Look at all these ships here, just lined up one after another. Unbelievable. So the one that looks kind of funny is this one down here, the one that got double modeled, so we'll just avoid that by cutting over here before we get to it. And we're getting a little bit of popping. As I warned you that we might, once we get, yeah, see these are kind of on top of each other too, so there's a little bit of stacking going on there, but it looks cool, the cranes look fantastic. All right, let's circle over here, take a nice look at this. Yep, that's how I like my ports, jam-packed. All kinds of crap down there, beautiful. Looks like they got some dry docks over here. Just amazing. And this is called the River Itchen that runs up through here. And that big stadium is right along, the, well, it's not quite on the waterfront, but it's pretty close to it. Yeah, you can see some of the other cranes look like the default cranes, which are all filled underneath. That's what these are over here. All right, so a few more fun facts about Portsmouth and Southampton. Portsmouth's nickname is Pompey, and no one is really sure how that came to be. Some speculate it may have something to do with a French ship called La Pompey, which was captured in Portsmouth in 1793. But I think the most likely and far more interesting explanation is the abbreviation for the harbor in old ship logs was POM period P period, which was the abbreviation for Portsmouth Point. And Portsmouth is also the only city in the UK with a population density higher than London. So they got about 200,000 people living on 14 square miles down there. I was surprised it was even that big. I don't even know if I read that right. It looked like it was even smaller than that. And Portsmouth is also featured on Britain's oldest navigational map, which was likely produced in 1360, having just one building at the time, and it was called Portus Mouth, two words, which probably tells the whole story about how that region got its name. As far as Southampton goes, not quite as much to talk about as far as fun facts, but Jane Austen lived here for two years, during which time she wrote her novel Sense and Sensibility. All right, let's start coming way down. And this place also burst its share of future celebrities, Southampton that is. Most notably, Benny Hill and 1980s recording artist Howard Jones, whose real name is John Howard. And for all of you Downton Abbey fans, the actress who played Lady Edith, Laura Carmichael, was born here in 1986. Look how beautiful this is. Ugh. Very, very nice. All right, so we're coming into Southampton Airport, Echo Golf Hotel, India. And this started as an airstrip in a big field way back in 1910, getting handed over to the US military in 1917 for use in World War I, after which it was named NAS Eastleigh, eventually becoming home to roughly 4,000 troops during the war. And it served as a municipal airport between the wars before switching back to military use and getting the designation RAF Southampton for World War II. And in 1936, the Super Marine Corporation opened a flight test facility out here, launching a new design called the Spitfire into the air for the first time in that same year. And today, of course, its single 5,600-foot runway is the primary commercial terminal for this region. Okay, so again, in the video description, all the flight plans we've used, all of them are freeware except that Orbix pack. Those will be linked in there. And the flight plan will be linked in there. And that will open up in a little nav map. If you don't know how to use that, we do have a tutorial somewhere in our archives, or just go to the how-to playlist. And then those two YouTube videos I mentioned, which is the one for the exploration of that castle on the Isle of Wight, and then the raised ship museum out in Portsmouth. 
and the link for our Discord server, which I'll strongly encourage you to join. That's a fun place. All right, so I need to get real slow here. We need to be down by that red line because last time I did this, down here on our airspeed indicator, I was bouncing all over the place. It was a soft bounce, but I don't like bouncing any more than necessary. And you can see it really doesn't like slowing down too much. We're gonna have to flare for a while. And we're getting a little stuttering too. And then once we pull over, I'll turn off my headset mic and we'll take a look at little nav map once we get her shut down. Yeah, we're getting a lot of stuttering here. There's an add-on for this airport too. I didn't even add it because of the stuttering. I was afraid it would make it even worse. All right, so I'm just gonna trim way, way up and see how long we can flare here to burn off the rest of this airspeed. We might still get some hopping. There we go, burned off, baby, burn it off. See, it's a very gentle hop. I can take hops like that. And I wanna raise my flaps, but whoa, 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 slow down, baby. Slow down, slow your roll. And if you hit the brakes too hard, it'll just tip forward, so we won't do that. So this rollout will get us right about to this taxiway. And we'll just turn off Parker and take a look at the little nav map. Just listen to the sound of that engine camming like that. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Tail dragger, vintage, biplane. Sounds chattery and clunky. Love everything about it. My hand just keeps instinctively going to my flap control lever, thinking that we've got some. And you know, I just noticed that little gauge up there by the front cockpit seat. I wonder what that is. Judging by the way it's going up and down, it must be for RPMs. All right, what do you guys think? We'll probably take our pick. We'll just pull right over here to the right. Man, I love the sound of that. Oh, that sounds really nice. All right, well, let's park over here by the parking garage. I don't want to park in the main taxiway here. Not that it matters, because no one else is out here. Okay, go ahead. Brakes aren't very strong in this. Probably to be expected. All right, parking brake on. And we'll just kill the mags. And the only thing this has is a mixture control, so the throttle and the mixture control is all we got. All the way down. All the way down. There we go. Okay, so headset mic off. And here's a little nav map. Let's take off the centering so it doesn't keep jumping around on us. All right, I'm going to remove our airplane trail. So here's the Isle of Wight. And I'm going to leave the streets on. And if you have a satellite map and you want to turn the streets on, just go to Satellite Streets. If you don't know how to do that, click right up there on that little globe. And if you click off of that and just go to Satellite, it'll take these all off. So here's the airport we took off from, which again does have an add-on for it, which was fantastic. And look how unpopulated this whole island really is. And down along the cliffs seem to be where all the fossils are. And there's also a heliport right here, right here, which looks really cool. The Needles heliport. And they actually modeled the cliffs pretty well. But over here, it starts to look stretchy and blurry. So I took off from there the first time, but it started to look bad pretty quick. So here is where Carisbrook Castle is, which again, you know what? There's drawn lines all the place. Let's just take that off. Let's just take it off. And now we have to wait 15 minutes for it to find itself again. So you could definitely see all of the palisades going around. It looked fantastic. And really, this didn't look too far off in the sim, even though it was default stuff. So there's where the Mott and Bailey probably, well, this was the Mott, I guess. The Bailey would have been this area out here where the original castle was, and they built a big curtain wall and then added this stuff again around 1600. It went around the outside of it. Oh, man, I hope it's not going to do that the whole time we're looking at this thing. That would be really bad. And here's the town of Newport over here. Look at that thing. I wonder what that is. That's strange. If you're from the area, and I'm sure some of you guys that are watching probably are, let us know what that thing is if you know. That's interesting. Oh, uh, all right, let me try putting the streets back on, see if he'll stop doing that, because that's just insufferable. Okay, we're going to have to tolerate that. Okay, so here is where Norris Castle was, which is what the guy built to be next to the Queen's property. Although I don't know if the Queen owned that when he originally built it, but that's what it looks like now, and it's abandoned. And I'm going to attach the video of somebody exploring that thing, which is just awesome. And then here's Osborne House, where Queen Victoria lived, which, I mean, look how cool it is. Did not get modeled at all. And then here's her bathing machine down here. Queen Victoria bathing machine. So she'd get in this little thing here, and they had some tracks, I think, that would wheel it right down to the water, and a little curtain would come out so she could get naked or whatever the heck she was doing there with Albert. Goodness knows what those guys were doing inside that thing. And then she'd just wheel herself back. So here's Wooten Creek, uh, Wooten Creek, and here's where the new Abbey is, which is the part that looked like it might have been modeled right was this here. It even had like a little clock tower up there. This was not. That's the newer one. And then here's the remains of the old one, and that did look like that in the sim, so that was pretty cool. And then here's where the ride pier is. And that looked pretty much just like that in the sim. So here's where the little tramway was that is now a bona fide train track. And it comes down here in the city, goes into this tunnel here. 
and then spits out over here, and then they got little train station to just wind all the way through the island, which is probably an incredible trip to take, I would think. But yeah, you can imagine all those dandies from the Victorian era coming out here, telling them they got to walk through the sand to get up here. That would not work. So they had to build the build the pier out there. And then here's where that other little... Where is that other little... Oh, here's the other little fort that I pointed out in the distance, which they put the thing right over it, so we can't see that. But here's the two that we saw. No Man's Land Fort was this one right here, which looked great if you had the Orbix pack. And then here's Horse Sand Fort, the one that was bought recently, to do who knows what with that. And then we came up here to... So, wow, that even has more sandbars than we were seeing in the sim. That area up there. And this thing right here, which you definitely can't see in the sim, I think these Mulberry Harbor units were what they pulled into Normandy after the D-Day invasion to set up to pull all the boats up to, and I guess they have the remains of one right there. After they landed over there. But here's Fort Cumberland. Look at that. Looked just like that in the sim. Although you can't see what the sides of it look like. But that was cool. Really cool. They did a great job with that. And then right about here is where the photogrammetry started. So here's the East Battery, which you really couldn't see at all. East Knee Battery. Oh, okay, so that's what it is. Battery East and Battery West. So that was confusing because it's called East Knee. You could see that one. And here's that thing. Well, it is a museum. The Royal Marines Museum. This wasn't on the Google map at all. They didn't mark it. So I don't know what they actually have down there because there was nothing to click on Google, which would have brought me to that. And I didn't know the name of it either. So that explains that. And here's Lump's Fort, which was too treat over to see the little model village over here. But that's what it looks like. I'd be interested to see that if it's as funny as everybody says it is. And then here's the South Parade Pier. And there's the best of British food right there. And by the way, the bookmark link will also be included in the video description. So if you guys want to pull that in a little nav map, it'll add all these bookmarks and the bookmarks for every flight we've ever taken. And this is the one that Henry VIII built down here. And then they added these a little bit later. So this was one of his that he built out of his paranoia about the French attacks. And this one's South Sea Castle. And you can see they have a brewery in it now, although I think you can tour it as well. There's the aquarium. There's that skate park, which really looked great in the sim. I love seeing things like that. There's the Royal Navy War Memorial that was built after World War I, subsequently adding the World War II victims to that. Oh, man, we forgot to look at it. This is modeled really well, too, and there's even a big Ferris wheel, also part of the Orbix pack. But this is the Clarence Pier, which obviously doesn't have a pier, and Hoverport. So this little hovercraft here, this isn't the big one, the museum. I'll show you that in a second. This one goes over to Isle of Wight, which would be absolutely awesome. Uh, we forgot to look at that, but it is modeled if you have the Orbix pack. And then we came up to Portsmouth up here. So there's the Warrior, the first fully iron-hulled warship. And they got all kinds of museums and stuff up here. There's the Victory which was Lord Nelson's flagship, actually. And we saw some of the places where he was injured in some of our other tours. And there's where the Mary Rose is in there, Henry VIII's flagship. And you got to check out the video for that. If you do nothing else, very cool. All these aircraft carriers. And let's see if we can spot any of the subs that were out here. Hmm, I'm not seeing any up here, but I sure am glad whoever added those added them because I love sub spotting. And then here's Charles Dickens's birthplace right there. And they made a museum out of that place, too. Okay, so... You can see this whole thing is an island. There's Broom Creek going around there, or Broom Channel. And then here is where the moat was that they dug way back in the day, out here. And you can see they even have some ramparts that you can probably tour down there. I don't know what those look like now. He'll see. He'll say. Probably he'll see. Which is really cool. And I'll show you some of the forts on the north side here in just a second. But here is where Porchester Castle is, favorite hunting lodge of King John. And that doesn't really look very Roman to me. So that was probably built up, that curtain wall there when the castle went up. And you can see that that's mostly in ruins now. There's the keep. Although it looks like they got a roof on that. Probably made a museum out of that, I'm sure. And then up here, here's all the perimeter forts. Look at these things. So they got one here, here, and some of them. That one's still a fort. You can tell. They didn't. They probably made a museum out of that one, so that's very cool. This one here still looks like a fort. Although they got a bunch of junk parked over there. Fort Wildly. And then this one here, they've made into something else, obviously. So it still has the moat and everything. It looks like they even have a car, a road going through where the moat was there. And then this one still looks like a fort for sure. Look at that. All around this place. So then we came over here to check out. There's another fort there. And this is one of the ones where the moat's just grown in, and they've obviously made it something else now. Looks like a window installation place. That's great. Here's where the fleet lands is, and if you get the add-on pack and throw it in there, you'll see the helicopters parked down there, which is very cool, and two little helipads, which you can land at right over here, and then here's where all the ordnance bunkers are. Look at these things. All of them have the dirt around them. So again, they would take them, they'd load them up on a barge, probably right here, drive them down to this place, and this is where they load them up on the ships, right down there. That got three out of five stars in Google, by the way. Don't know why. Here's the fort we did get a good look at, Fort Brockhurst, which looked fantastic. And there's two more forts. So these are the ones that were too close to the harbor for the French guns. They could have been far enough away that the forts couldn't hit them, and the French could still hit the harbor. So these were useless by the time they built these. The ones on the north side were far enough away, apparently, that they never got attacked anyway, so I guess it really didn't matter. And then here's where the submarine museum is, and there's the sub that we could see. 
the Alliance, HMS Alliance. And I was looking for some more because they had quite a few on their website, but they must be inside of these warehouses that they've got here because I don't see any more on the outside of that place. And then here's Fort Mockton. This is the one that was built out of fear of an American attack during the Revolutionary War, which also never came. That one looked awesome. This was Gill Kicker, which was the one that was built and never used. And now they're building it into a residential complex, which looks like it's right next to a golf course. So I don't know where they're going to build the houses, but they said they're going to try to restore the fort too, which is good. They're not going to tear that down. And then here's Brownden Battery. And there's another little one right up here. You see that little guy in there? It just caught my eye. Look at that. Now it's a diving museum. So I don't know what they got going on in there, but that's probably pretty cool too. And we can see that. That looks really good. And this is Brownden out here, whatever that is or was. And then here is the Hovercraft Museum. So check this out. So in the sim, there was one down here. And obviously this isn't a national museum because they hardly have any parking. Good grief. Where would you park if you're going to that place? There's no parking anywhere. But there's a huge one. We could see that one. There was another huge one right here that looked just like that one. And then we got one, two, at least three more. I'm guessing they probably have some more inside of here too. And it looks, it looks like they even got a little runway if you want to drive them out in the water, which is probably how they got them out here. Awesome. And there's the Solent Airport, which is great. Looks cool. And I think there's an add-on for that, too. That's the other add-on. There's an add-on for that airport because it was so close to this and it wasn't affecting our performance, so I left that in there. And here's one of Henry VIII's other round tower castles that he built, Calshot, which looked great. That was an add-on, too, with the Orbix pack. And then we came up here to where the huge hospital used to be, the Royal Victoria Hospital Museum, and that's called the Netley Museum in Google. So I don't know which name it actually is, but back in the day, it went all the way over here and then all the way over here. And Florence Nightingale had something to do with that. It was just mentioned on the Wikipedia page, but it doesn't really say what she had to do with it. So and there's, I think this is called the Nightingale House or something out here. Oh, there it is right there. Which I don't know what that is either. I couldn't get any details on it. And then here's the place they converted to apartments. So this was originally a coastal battery that Henry VIII also built. And that lasted all the way up until the English Civil Wars, and then it became a nursing home for a while in the 1900s, and now it is an apartment complex, which is just freaking incredible. And then here's the uh, ruins of the Abbey, which looks like a ruined Abbey. And these things are all over England, just the ruins of those. And then here's the big ports of here. So there's the bridge that got touched up with the add-on. Definitely throw that on if you're going to take this flight. There's St. Mary's Stadium. And then here is these ports. Wow, that looked just like that, too. Look at that. Look at all those containers. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what's going on with it loading like this. Boy, that looked just like that, except there was about 10 times as many ships going around here, which I really appreciate. Cruise ship there. Let's see, are there ferries down there? Oh, they don't have any ferries parked there. That looks kind of like a ferry, but this is a, a cruise terminal here. There was a cruise ship right there, too. Awesome. And then we came on in to Southampton International. Fantastic flight. Absolutely awesome. If you have a biplane, take it in the biplane. If you have that biplane, take it in that one. Just incredible. So now I'm going to spend a few hours seeing if I can get my headset mic to sound like it should. And I can't wait to get it uploaded. Had an absolute blast as always. Cannot wait to see you guys again in the skies. Later.